Does FBA scan have you triggered? Hey everybody, it's Manny from Manny's Book Bag. And today we're gonna talk about FBA scan and specifically trigger settings in FBA scan. Now it's been coming up in the Facebook groups a lot. We'll see someone post a screenshot of a perfectly sellable FBA book or CD and the question will be, why is it rejecting? Well, if you're not using the triggers for the purposes of buying or rejecting, it just doesn't matter. Disregard it and analyze your data. Determine with your own eyes and your own understanding of what you want to sell whether that's an item you're going to buy or not. But if you are going to give triggers a shot, you really have to know what they are. And that's actually a simple answer. Triggers are rules. You're actually going to set rules in FBA scan based on acceptable sales ranks, uh, price, and which price. Are you going to price against FBA? Are you going to price against the lowest overall price? The second lowest overall price or the third lowest overall price. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities involved, but really the rules are yours to set. So the theory is actually really simple. You set these rules up in your phone ahead of time, and then your phone is going to tell you with whatever beep or chime you choose whether the item should be a buy or whether the item should be rejected. Now I'm going to tell you what I don't use it for. I never use this to buy blindly. In other words, if I'm wearing my earbuds and I'm just listening for the chimes, I don't just automatically put a book in my basket just because a piece of software tells me to. Software is not perfect. FBA scan is no exception. There's no way to capture everything that you want to capture with any settings. Here's some examples. Let's say that I set these settings sufficiently high enough where I don't bring home any duds and every single book that I bring home, I know is gonna be worthy of FBA. The problem is you're gonna leave an awful lot behind. There's gonna be a lot of books, there's gonna be a lot of titles that are gonna slip through the cracks. So let's say you set them sufficiently low enough to not leave anything behind. Well, the issue with that is that you're gonna capture all of the profit on the shelf but you're also gonna bring home a lot of duds because your settings are too low. So as you can see, that's a real problem. I don't scan blindly in any situation. I don't care if I'm in a thrift store. I don't care if I'm at an estate sale. I don't care if I am at a highly competitive book sale. I don't care if I'm at my Aunt Connie's house. I'm not gonna scan without looking at the buy triggers. And that's what I do. I scan very quickly and very efficiently because I set very low triggers. And what I mean by that is I set it so that it's going to reject the worst of the worst. They're low enough where if a book does not pass the basic scan test, it is absolutely not FBA worthy at all by my criteria. So that means I don't have to stop. That means I don't have to look at my screen. I don't have to waste any time looking at the data. If I just listen for the audio trigger that I have put down for my reject, and when I, when I hear that, I just keep going and I don't stop scanning until I get a buy trigger. Now when I get a buy trigger, that doesn't mean that I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna put it in the basket. That book could very well still be a dud but the buy trigger tells me that it's time to actually start looking at my screen. So when I get a buy trigger, I'll look at my screen. And from there, I'm gonna analyze whether it's a book I wanna buy. And that brings up another really key point. Before you even think about setting up triggers, make sure that you've already gone through the process of scanning a lot of books. Make sure that you're really comfortable with what exactly your criteria is and make sure that you've become very efficient at actually analyzing data. If you set triggers, but you don't quite know what to look at as far as figuring out if it's a book you want to buy, 
you're really cheating yourself. So before you even get to this stage, you should have already been scanning for a while. You should have already been practicing, uh, looking at FBA columns, uh, Keepa, camel, 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 understanding the relationship between rank and average rank, even understanding the relationship between merchant fulfilled pricing and how much money you can expect to make on a book FBA. It's not always so cut and dry. And these are the things th that you want to practice and get better at before you get to this stage. Because once you do get the buy trigger, you have to figure out if you want to buy the book. Typically, I can make a buying decision in a couple of seconds, really. And it's as simple as getting a buy trigger, looking at the lowest FBA price, looking at the stated condition of that FBA price, what's the rank, what's the average sales rank. By doing these things, I can generally make a decision and cut down on the number of times that I have to check Keepa, the number of times I have to check Camel, Camel, Camel. And actually, I can actually cut down how often I have to tap through the header to look at all the FBA offers. The better that you can get at doing this, the faster a scanner you will be before you even get to the triggers. Now, a couple of quick tips for when you start setting up your personal triggers. Uh, the first one that I'm going to tell you is that I like to use the advanced triggers because they are much more flexible than the basic triggers are. The basic triggers are going to go by uh, one type of price, whether you want to price by the lowest FBA, whether you want to price by the lowest of all prices, you're locked into that format with all of your basic triggers. But with the advanced triggers, you can actually get really, really fancy. And what you can do is you can have your first trigger with the lowest sales rank. If you want to, you can have that uh, trigger as a buy based on the second or the third lowest of all prices. And as you get up there in rank, then you can start to go to the lowest price. It gives you a more organic feel to the decision. It's a little bit closer to what a human being would do if they were looking at really great sales ranks and deciding they wanted to let somebody sell out first. And that's another tip. I would not recommend setting up your triggers based on FBA prices. We can talk until we're blue in the face about how Amazon restricts some offers from ever being seen. And that's true. There's the API restriction is real. So what I do is I completely move past that by setting all of my triggers on merchant fulfilled prices. Merchant fulfilled pricing is not restricted at all. And it is a very reliable way of determining whether you can make money on an FBA book or not. Now the spread in price between FBA and merchant fulfilled pricing is another reason why I like setting low triggers because there is going to be that book that you find for $2 Merchant Fulfill that sells for $30 FBA. So you don't want to leave that book behind. And the last tip that I'm going to share in this video is to go ahead and make sure that you use those audio triggers. Wear those earbuds, wear your headphones. Not only is it going to help you to focus on what you're doing and speed you up to get right through all of those rejects, but it also kind of serves as a little bit of a person barrier where folks tend to leave you alone a little more. Uh, I have brought it up in other videos that there are some people that are going to be naturally inquisitive and they're going to want to know what you're doing. Uh, so don't expect the headphones to work all the time. but it'll keep some folks away. But what do you do? Do you use the triggers? If so, how do you use them? Are you dead set against triggers? Put down in the comments below. Let me know how you use them, if at all. Also, be sure to check out my prior videos about FBA scan updates. And if you like this video, please remember to teach that like button a lesson. Also, remember to subscribe to this channel to support it by hitting that book bag up there. And until next time, this is Manny from Manny's Book Bag. Let's go make some money.